Honorable Chair, when the first Women's Global Leadership Institute initiated the 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence campaign in 1991, it did not imagine that 31 years later, this house would still be debating how to get the South African state to deliver us from this evil. The Institute did not imagine that in 2022, 148 women would be opening assault with grievous bodily harm cases in this country every day. That in South Africa, over 10,590 people would have been raped between July and September alone. And that the latest quarterly crime statistics would pain paint the painful picture of 536 cases of attempted sexual offenses, 1,895 cases of sexual assault, 262 contact sexual offenses, and the killing of 989 women. The bottom line is that as horrifying as these statistics are, they still do not factor everyone else who's battling with gender-based violence and femicide in silent in silence. Honorable Chair, the Institute did not imagine that let's say thing Lena Itlar Haria di Kantorong Zama Ponesa, Ratlaber Botari Potso Zed Kronkrolang, Zed Diang Moya, Zer O San Jolo Kahornar Neri and Zeng Haratla Wokra, Lo Hornar Neria Berying Hartlabid. The Institute definitely did not imagine that three decades later, the president of a democratic South African government would choose an opportunity to score ANC political points over securing the lives and safety of women. Yes, Honorable Chair, President Ramaphosa has sold us out. Order. For him. Order, Honorable Members. No, proceed. Uh, you are drowning the speaker. Just talk. I repeat, Chair, President Ramaphosa has sold us out. For him, gender-based violence and femicide remain a mere conversation appetizer that is meant to make him and his government seem somewhat re relevant or aggrieved by the pain of being brutally murdered, raped, and assaulted for simply being a woman. If this were not true, police stations would be safe spaces and we would have seen an implementation of effective monitoring mechanisms for cases of GBV. If this were not true, he would have fired Minister Becky Taylor by now. If he, because we are cursed with a police minister who considers us lucky for being raped by one man instead of many. Honorable Kakao, your chief whip's hand is up. Honorable Chair, uh, can you please ask that the members not drown out the speaker? It's really, we are battling to hear her. Thank you, honorable members. Please, I, I said from the beginning that this is a maiden speech, which I believe, order, order, order. Let me say, let me talk, don't talk back to me. Honorable members. Uh, but who made the same as even if you are making a maiden speech the, the uh, you must reciprocate what the others are doing because you really can't uh, say what you want to say in your maiden speech in a different way proceed ma thank you chair we wouldn't be cursed with a whole police minister that has absolutely no clue no care on how to deal with this plague Chair, if this were not true, President Ramaphosa would have done more than to be shocked all the time and deliver a summit with no tangible and sustainable outcomes and progress to tackle gender-based violence head on as his alpha and omega strategy. So what remains clear, <laughs> Chairperson, is that President Ramaphosa and Minister Kale do not care about us because under their watch, our blood and souls are mere sacrificial products. Through you, Honorable Chair, allow me to say this to Mr. President. 
President Ramaphosa, the first step to empowering women and building, and building resilience against gender-based violence and femicide is to appoint a minister that is capable, that cares and understands the mandate of the people he represents and serves. And that person is definitely not Minister Bekitaele. So I dare you, Mr. President, choose us, honor us, Honor your commitment to serve and to protect. Get rid of Minister Bekitele with immediate effect. Thank you.